Want to know how to make a sustainable, seasonal bridesmaids bouquet? Then watch on and I'll show you how. So I'm going to share with you my top three tips for managing making bridesmaids because no bride ever has just one or two maids these days. I don't think I've ever done a wedding for less than five bridesmaids. So if that's the case and you've run out of flowers in the past, I'm going to share my three top tips that will avoid you doing that. So one is just some practicalities I'm going to share. Two, when you're working with seasonal and scented foliage, it doesn't come in wraps from the Dutchman, all stiff stems, all exactly the same. So I'm going to show you how I get round that so that all the five bridesmaids will look fairly similar. And finally, my third point, I'm going to show you how you can marry those bridesmaids with the bride, which is, I think, a really, really critical thing. So top tip number one. On a practicality front, you've cut so many stems, you've got five bridesmaids, get yourself five buckets and then divide each of the material into those buckets because I don't know whether you've ever been in the position where you've got to the last bridesmaid and you're scrambling for stuff. The other advantage of putting your material in your bucket is you're almost starting to build your bouquet and you can see the materials that you've got in there, the textures, the colours, and it gives you a feel for how the bouquet is going to look. Plus that huge advantage of being able to marry all those uh, uh, bridesmaids bouquets together. So five buckets, count your stems, spread them throughout your buckets, and um, that will be at least, you know, you know you've got enough material for all the bridesmaids that you um, need to make. My second top tip is when you're using seasonal scented material, none of it comes poker straight or actually in, um, you know, in a wrap of stems. That's what you don't want, isn't it? You don't want it to be um, just a standard thing. But in that, you do want to um, create things that look similar. So look at your stems when you're putting them in the buckets include curvy interested things but also um, make sure that you've got enough um, similarity between your material that when you're coming to make your bouquets particularly for the bridesmaids because they aren't the main deal let's be honest um, then make sure that you can you know divide your material and that it's good so for example with the sweet pea tendril I will cut that off at that point but that's a really nice stem that can be used in a, in a bridal bouquet another important thing is to make sure you do include stiff enough stems to give your bridal bouquet some mechanics because you know they're going to be looking after the bride they don't want to be fussing on their uh, bouquets and the other critical thing my third top tip is make sure that everything that you've got in your bridesmaids buckets is reflected in the bucket because I have a separate bucket for my bride where all the best material goes and you know the most beautiful flowers so everybody gets beautiful flowers but the bride gets extra beautiful flowers so if you have sweet peas in your bridesmaids bouquets have big beautiful stems of sweet peas for your bride because I think it's sometimes when you look at um, photographs of uh, florals for brides their bridesmaids look like they're going to a separate wedding almost and your bridesmaids are your lifelong friends you know that you you they're important enough to you to invite them to be your maids so it i do think it's really really critical to get some cohesion between your bridesmaids and your and your bride so three top tips make sure you've got all your buckets for however many bridesmaids and obviously the bride Divide your material before you start between those buckets to make sure that you won't run out of material. Have a look at your quirky scented stems and make sure that it's equally divided so that there's not a wonky stem bucket or a straight stem bucket because you want your bridesmaids bouquets to look similar. And then my final top tip, the third one, make sure that the materials that you're using in your buckets for your bridesmaids are reflected in your bridal bouquet too. So they all look, um, although the bride's marrying um, her partner, 
um, the bridesmaids look like they're meant to be with you. So you've got ready and make sure you've got your snips handy, your ingredients in front of you and very critically whatever you're going to bind your bouquet with and a bucket of water ready to put the bouquet in. So I like to use raffia so I've got all my strips of raffia ready. So for bridesmaids I um, actually like to spiral um, so I, I, for the bride I won't spiral but um, for a bridesmaid I will spiral so I will put some ingredients together put um, start to get my foliage in I'm gonna leave that stem for the outside I love this apple mint and I do leave it long on the on the leaves but you just don't know so I'm looking very carefully at my binding point now because that's going to dictate the size of um, my, bri my bridesmaid and I don't want it to be too big. You know, I think as a florist you either can easily make big or easily make, easily make small. I'm an easily make big person so, um, <laughs> so I do ha have to be very careful not to make too big. So I'm still adding my ingredients, I'm turning. I think um, a really critical thing with any bouquet um, is the twiddly bits, if you know what I mean. So whenever you put in ingredients in, you put them in at an angle, as you know, 45 is the floristry angle um, of choice because it gives you movement. So this is my twiddly bit, that um, perennial scabiosa, absolutely love it. Um, you always know your ingredients are twiddly bit because it gets trapped in a bucket and you can't get it out. So, um, I think the thing with bridesmaids bouquets is it's little and often when you're turning, trying to get big chunks in all at once, and it will look like it's a bit of a mess initially, but you switch off your critical mind and you just keep going. And you look at forming your dome. So I'm gonna pull some pieces up, put that mint down. Get some privet in there and then keep turning. I absolutely love these sweet peas. There's a whole debate about whether it's worth growing them because they are tricky to grow. Uh, they require a lot of attention, but you know what? You can't buy them. Um, well, you can, but my goodness me, what a cost. And they are never, um, they're never like going out into your garden and picking them. So. Even if you're a florist who doesn't grow, um, I would just encourage you to get um, a row of sweet peas going for next year's wedding season because it really does make a huge difference. So I will, for garden roses, they're, they can have big heavy heads, so they do need, um, I call it like a bra, they do need a bra. So um, I'm just tucking that one there with a bit of privet. Privet is really good actually for um, summer bouquets because tomorrow in Cheshire, we've had rain, it's been quite cold actually. It's felt like, um, you know, autumn is here before it really is. And, um, but tomorrow is gonna be a beautiful day. I'm so delighted for <laughs> for my bride because she's rescheduled this wedding. This is the third time, God love her. So um, I'm really hopeful that this is going to be the time for her. I'm sure she is as well. So, and you keep going. And actually, I think that's our veg man. <laughs> he is also a very lovely person. It's quite good to save some softness for the outside um, because you don't want a hard edge. And it's quite helpful to tip a bouquet on its side sometimes because you can see the shape from underneath.
and then I might stop talking because I'm thinking about my creation. Please, with that length of step. This is an ECO. I'm definitely going to grow some more of that because it's amazing stuff. When you do have a stem, have a look at which direction it goes in. reverse and always keep your direction keep that softness on the outside keep looking at your shape just needs a bit of a tuck in there. I'm going to do a bit of scaffolding. Sweet pea tendrils are really great for scaffolding because when you condition them really well they get really stiff and they're an interesting foliage so they're quite good for that. I like to leave some of my um, interesting bits for the edge a little bit of sweet pea foliage tuck that in and I've got another stem of rose here So, I think that's my first bridesmaids, and I just tie off at the binding point with Moraffia. And I like to use this similar colour. Um, the bride actually wants very pale silk, so I don't want a sort of strong. Um, raffia underneath, they wanted it to be almost the same as the stem colour. So I'm just going to tie that gentle but firm as always. And I'm not going to take a lot off the bottom because I still, but I am going to get it to a sort of straight line. And then I'm going to put it in a bucket and start on number two.
So these are the bridesmaids that you saw me making before. It's now the morning of the wedding and I've got some beautiful silk to put on them. I always do them at the venue because it means you can just check to see if anything's loosened or that everything's okay in your bouquet. So I just tie them on in a very sort of natural way because I like um, that look of a ruffled bit of silk down the bottom of the bouquet, the bridal. So the bridesmaids, I mean, so I pull it tight and then put a knot in it. And then I put tissue around and then she's good to go. 